Shalom, 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 Israel. This is Jeremiah Ben Israel, and this is Real Talk. And this is part one of the series. Well, not a series, but the teaching on who will be going into the wilderness. A lot of people, a lot of ox and the Cody's teach that there's only going to be 144,000, the remit of 144,000. So we have to keep in mind that 144,000 isn't that much. Now, what I'm going to show you, which most people are failing to do, is that 144,000 men who will not be defiled by women that teaching is not talking about the multitude that will be in the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, there shall be way more than 144,000. The scriptures tell you that Jerusalem, who lost her children, will say, where did these come from? In the book of Isaiah, where did these come from? For I have lost mine. And the scriptures also goes and tell you that it will be more of her children that will return than it was that left. So we're going to go into the understanding of who's going to be in the wilderness. And I'm starting with uh, the book of John, chapter 7. And I'm starting at the verse 33. John, chapter 7, verse 33. And Yahushua therefore said, For a little while longer I am with you. Then I go to him who sent me. You shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. The Hebrews therefore said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we shall not find him? He is not intending to go to dispersion. Key word, dispersion, scattered. He is not he is not intending to go to the dispersion among amongst among the Greeks and teach the Greeks, is he? In other scriptures it says he is not going to where where will this fellow go? Is he gonna to go to the disperse that's amongst the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Now the key word is dispersion, and the key word is gen, uh, Greeks or Gentiles two times. Why does it say, is he, is he not intending to go to the dispersion? Let's deal with dispersion, scattered. The scriptures tell us in John chapter 11, and I'm going to go there in a minute, right after this, in John chapter 11, that it was expedient for the Messiah to die. Not for just that nation, but for those who were scattered abroad. So this word dispersion is here because it's pertaining to those who are scattered out among the Greeks or among the Gentiles or among the heathens or among the other nations and teach the Greeks or the Gentiles or the other nations. So why would they say he is not intending to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? The reason why they said that at that time, the southern nation was scattered. They were already in captivity taken by the Syrians. So at the time of the, of the Messiah, as he was doing his ministry and teaching, the only nation that was still around was the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was already in captivity, already scattered abroad, already living amongst the heathens, the Gentiles, the Greeks. And the southern nation, which was Yahuda or Judah, did not consider them to be Hebrews any longer. They did not consider them to be Israelites. They considered them to be just like the heathens because they did not keep the laws, they did not keep the statutes or the commandments, and they knew, according to Scripture, when the Most High said, that you have done more treacherously than your sister. 
Because Israel, Israel did terrible things more than Yahuda did. So he cut them off as his people. That's why he said that they will be adopted back in. He cut them off. So this word dispersion means scattered. And, and, and they were saying that he's going to those who are Hebrews, who they consider to be Gentiles that were among the Gentiles. That's what they were talking about. That's why it says what you see here. The Hebrews therefore said one to another, where does this man intend to go that we shall not fire him? He is not intending to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks, is he? Now let's go to John chapter 11. I'm going to keep this video short because YouTube and, um, YouTube and Facebook are not allowing me to upload my first uh, video that I did. So I'm keeping these short. So um, it might be three or four of this first part because I'm keeping them short. Okay, here we are. We are in John chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 51. Now, this he did not say on his own negativity, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahushua was going to die for the nation. Key word, nation. There's no S, so it's talking about one nation, which they were talking about the southern kingdom. And not for the nation, and not for the nation only, but that he might also gather together into the children. Select. Verse 52. And not for the and not for the nation only, but that he might also gather together into one the children of Yaqua who are scattered abroad. So the children of Yaqua that were scattered abroad, not just for that nation only, not for that nation only, but that he might also gather together into the children of Yaqua who are scattered abroad. See, he's talking about another nation, which was the northern nation. Which was the northern nation. And then let's go to Acts chapter 26, and we're going to see what Shaul said, a.k.a. Paul. See, a lot of people give uh, Paul a bad rep because the Romans, during the time when Paul was in prison, got a hold of his, um, got a hold of his uh, epistles, his writings, and they perverted them, and they changed them so that now you have, a, you know, arguments that Paul was teaching against the laws, Paul was teaching against uh, what uh, the Messiah taught. No, he wasn't. Paul wasn't teaching that. If you read through it carefully, you'll find out there is more than one Paul in the Bible. It's a Paul that was inserted by the Romans and those who were working for the Romans, which were Hebrews, and those and, 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 and the teachings that were of Paul that end up getting out where they could not stop them from being put into the scriptures. Uh, this is uh, Acts chapter 26, and I'm only going to start at... Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start at verse one. I'm going to start at verse one. And Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and proceeded to make his defense in regard to all the things of which I am accused by the Hebrews. I consider myself fortunate, King Agrippa, that I am about to make my defense before you today especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions among the Hebrews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. I'm begging y'all, my brothers and sisters, my uncles and cookies, listen patiently. So then all Hebrews know my manner of life from my youth up, which from the beginning was spent among my own nation and at Jerusalem since they have known about me for a long time previously, if they are willing to testify that I lived as a Pharisee according to the strictest set of our belief. And now I am standing trial for the hope. Let me read that again. And now I am standing trial for the hope of the promise. What promise? The promise given to the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
for the hope of the promise made by Yaquah to our fathers, the promise to which our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly serve Yaquah night and day. And for this hope, O king, I am being accused by the Hebrews. Now, this is what he had told. He was telling, I was out here gathering the southern kingdom, I mean, the northern.